was a very tame Christmas sweater he had on for the weekend. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think he bought that with Cole's cash. He may have. <laughs> he like may have. Off. Very yeah. valuable. Uh, the Vikings win another nail biter against the Giants, who needed a win in the playoff picture in the NFC as well. But the Vikings pulled one off. Jason, what, just, what stood out to you? Are the Vikings like destined to the Super Talk Bowl? About it. You, you said Talk about 11 and 0 in one score one games. Score games. Uh, it's some stat, man. My goodness. It's it's one possession. Somehow or another, week in and week out, the Vikings find a way to win games. And we talk about, oh, they're the worst when they have 10 wins. They're the worst 10-0 and team and the 10-and-whatever team in the NFL history. But here they are late in the game, and before this, he converts a third and nine to Justin Jefferson. Then he's sacked, and then he comes right back, and they throw a screen pass. That far out of field goal range, they throw a screen pass to Justin Jefferson, and he's able to pick up enough yards to get in to close enough for Joseph to kick this field goal through the uprights. This Minnesota Vikings team, to win a Super Bowl, sometimes, obviously, you have to have a good football team. But you need the ball to bounce the right way. You need a little bit of luck on your side. And when you come back from 33 and a half, when you beat Buffalo in overtime in a tough one that they did down there in Western New York, this Vikings team, there's something special about them. And we can pick fun and poke holes all throughout their team, but there's something special about this team, how they keep coming up with wins in one-score games. Well, they finally answered the question. Are they just a team of flukes or are they a team of destiny? And the answer is yes. Because <laughs> that, the there's, a, yes. there's a big argument saying this is smoke and mirrors. Yeah, well... The defense Every is not time, good. Though, to get a win, at, it, that's the point. It at what point is it not smoke? So at this point, do they have to win a Super Bowl for it to not be smoke and mirrors? That's a good question. If you know. if you're looking at eight and three, oh yeah, smoke and mirrors and good luck. Twelve and three is twelve and three. It's amazing. This is post Christmas, and it's like everyone seems to be mad that they win these games in these really clutch fashions. <laughs> and you know, I think Peter had a good point last week. He's like. Can you just win the game like 30 to 13? Like, just give me a, a win that you don't have to win 45 to nothing, but like win my two scores. I don't think that's too much to ask. And they, the answer is no, they can't do it. No. They can't. But they also can't lose. So um, if we're going to be the show of record that says just stack wins and it's a tough league and all the teams compete and just win, they win every week. And they got a couple losses, sure. But like, I am a believer. And I, I'll say this again I know I'm in the minority. I posted a, just a bored Twitter poll last week. How many playoff games the Vikings win? Zero, one, or more than one. And like 52% just say zero. They'll be one and done. So in other words, you, the voter, think that they're going to get in the wild card and they're going to lose to somebody like Dallas or one of these teams, Packers. the Packers or the Lions or the Panthers or the Buccaneers. That's what you think. That's what you see. I see 12-3, and three and I can't possibly slight them for the way that they're doing it because yeah. the way they're doing it is not dominant, but I think it might be even better. It's clutch as hell. I, team to go, I, I tend to go more at 12-3 and three if they have it. I think they have it. Giants, um, I, last week I came here after the Bills lost to uh, – beat the Dolphins, and I was like, well, that's a moral victory. The Dolphins showed us they can go into yeah. the – like, Giants should have won this game. Mm -hmm. Giants had this game, or at least should have gone into overtime. Here's what it is. We love Wink Martindale, and we live and die with the blitz with Wink Martindale. There was a third down play call from the defense of the Giants. They had the Vikings buried back there on third and long. And Wink sends the house, and there's Justin Jefferson, who just is like, I'm going to get just enough. I yards. thought he was gone on this play. Yeah. I did. I know. It's like, and if you don't send the house, maybe you don't get it right there. And I think yeah. I almost feel... As good about the Giants after this loss than I do with the Vikings. I know you're what? a Vikings fan. Or that didn't age well for Miami. It didn't age well for Miami. I'm doing it right here again. Like, Giants, they were they were done. They came out there looking like they were going to lose by 24 points in the first half. And they fought and they clawed. And they've got Bellinger and Richie James and Isaac <laughs> and, and Isaiah Hodgins. Hoskins, yeah. And you're like, who are these yeah. guys? And they just <laughs> find a way to hang and hang and hang on the road in Minnesota. Giants right now are in the playoffs, and if they win on Sunday against the Colts, they are a wild card team. Mm. And I am taking this away as Vikings great win. That's what they do. They're 11 and 0 in one score games, which is an unheard of stat. But the Giants in a loss showed me a lot, and I think they're going to take care of business. I hope I'm not jinxing them against the Colts this weekend. Mm. And I would not want to face that team in the playoffs. They mm. fight every single week. In a wildly important possession. The Giants and Wink Martindale send the house at Kirk Cousins. And what does he do? He goes to Justin Jefferson because he is the most valuable player on that team. Mm. I think he is in the conversation for being the most valuable player in the NFL. Talk about and it. And I know Cooper Cup last year, there were major campaigns for getting the trifecta for a wide receiver, doesn't receive a vote. That's blasphemy. Ugh. Justin Jefferson is a 
149 catches off of breaking Michael Thomas's single season record, which was set in 2018. Wait, say that again. 100, 100, excuse me. Yeah. He had 149. Yes. He is 26 catches away okay. from it. Mm -hmm. He's got two left. Okay. He's got two games left to go. He is 208 receiving yards away from breaking Calvin Johnson's. That, to me, is the chapter that you have to get past. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is the one that this whole three seasons played the most number. Ignore that. That, to me, is actually a distracting way to look at it because you're not valuing what he's doing this season. Mm -hmm. You have to look at 2022 and the value that he has put in the wins for the Vikings, 12 wins. Patrick Mahomes is really good. Justin Jefferson is the most valuable player in the league because of how he affects the games that his team is in 11 and 0 in one possession games on third down against mm -hmm. a team that is desperate to get into the playoffs who does he go to who does his quarterback find Justin Jefferson he has to break that record and if he breaks both I think 26 catches over the next two games is a challenge I don't <laughs> think him finding 208 yards over the next two weeks no, is a challenge that. if he breaks both of those records seriously it's win a, it get a vote I, I'll say this get a, I, vote. Get a vote I don't, That's I don't care for Vikings records there's a lot been made like I, I respect yeah. you know, yeah, 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 yeah. and I think no. Pete Tucko it needs to be agree and felt, so that full screen of like he broke the Vikings record I don't right. care yeah he broke the NFL record in catches yes. and receiving yards. Yes. Now, I made a call to arms earlier in the show saying, Andrew Whitworth, get off your butt after Thursday and go sign. Make a call to arms to the NFL MVP voters. None of us have a vote. Call to arms. Make your case. Justin Jefferson, tell him to put the vote in. If you're going to put those two names on a pedestal for wide receivers, for those records, and we always compare it, and that's what we're looking for, on the list, it's bing, bing. It's mm -hmm. Cooper Cup is there. He, if he gets to the top of the list, Justin Jefferson, for most receiving yards in Gotta a single it. season, he is the most valuable player on this team. And a play like that, I'm so glad Peter drew it up. Because a team, I'm sorry, you guys are like laughing at each other. A team that relies on him in huge third down, he is valuable. He is the most valuable player. I'm in. Rock the vote, everybody. Listen to Jamie. Rock the vote.